The first strategy that you're going to see is a talk routine called Which One Doesn't Belong? And uh, the purpose behind this particular strategy is constructing viable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others. The math activity is called Which One Doesn't Belong? And with this one, you're going to notice that there's going to be four boxes. So we're going to have box one, box two, box three, and box four. And your guys' job is you're going to be trying to construct a viable argument about which box doesn't belong and why. In other words, one of the boxes does not fit with the other three boxes. And then they'll be able to have an opportunity to share with their partner and decide whether their argument is making sense or possibly if it's not making sense to their partners. I think box one doesn't belong because it's the only equation that doesn't use it, uh, no, sorry, addition multiplication. I think it's box two because the I mean the stars are circled and box one, three, and four are not circled. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. So embedded in which one doesn't belong is the strategy you show me on your fingers. Okay, before I have you move to your corners, I want you to show me on your fingers which box, one, two, three, or four, which box you don't think belongs. Just show me on your fingers. Hold it up high so I can see. Okay, seeing mixture, I see ones, I see some people saying twos, I see three, I see fours. Okay, really it is a strategy designed to give the teacher some formative feedback to see what students are initially thinking either before some sort of partner talk or possibly before some sort of movement in the classroom where they're going to have a discussion. Okay, Natalia, are you going to share your argument or your partner's? Mine. Okay, go ahead. So I think number one doesn't belong because it's the only one with addition, plus the stars in it aren't like um, inked in. All right. How many people, does that make sense to them? All right. Different argument. So I've heard one and four. Anyone else? Different argument. Uh, right over here. Okay, Robert, are you going to share your argument or your partner's? Mine. Okay, go ahead. I think box three doesn't belong because it's the only box that uses the number four. How many people? Does that make sense? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I didn't hear anyone share about box two. So I'm going to turn you back to your partners, and I want you and your partner to take a moment, see if you and your partner can come up with an argument of why box two would not belong. Okay, partners, go ahead. I think box two does not belong because it's the only one that uses a dot for multiplication. How many people does that make sense? This one we're going to do another which one doesn't belong, uh, but this time we're going to do a little bit of movement in the room. Movement in the classroom is something that we feel really passionate about. We think it's very important. It can be a little scary to have middle schoolers get up and start moving around, but with which one doesn't belong. The way it's structured is it allows students that physical movement to actually get up and move throughout the room, but it also gives them an opportunity to share with different partners that they may not get the opportunity to share in their seats. So you're trying to get a lot of cross-pollination across the room and try to get as many ideas to spread across the room as you can. Okay, get you out of your seat and move around a little bit. So, you're still gonna have private think time. I'm still gonna give you your private think time to come up with your argument or multiple arguments. Um, but what we're gonna do instead to, to the share out part is after private think time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you guys move to a corner of the box you don't think belongs. So they're labeled just like they are up here. Students are provided with some private think time to create argument and then also embedding in partner talks for students to practice their arguments before going to a whole group setting. So here's what we're going to do in a moment. In a moment, you're going to go to your corner, whichever box you don't think belongs. Reminder, one, two, three, four. And you're going to find a partner. And you're going to share your argument. So again, here's your sentence starter. I think box. And you're going to be in the same, the same corner. So you'll both share the same box. However, you, you'll notice you might have picked the same box, but you might have a different argument. So that will be really interesting. OK, you guys ready? 
All right, here we go. Let's get up, move to your corner, find your partner. Box number one, because it seems to be the only one that's a repeating decimal. Because it's the only one that has that sign. But isn't uh, number two and three repeating? Because they're also one third. All right, so what we're going to do, um, there's a lot of people in corner one. So we're going to start there um, with a quiet hand of anyone willing to share why you guys selected um, box one to not belong. Okay, thank you. What's your name? Michael. Okay, Michael. It's the only decimal. How many people does that make sense to them? In that corner, by showing quiet hands, how many people, that was your argument. Yeah, I anticipated that. But that, there was another hand up over there that said there was a different argument for corner one. And who was that? Was that you? What's your name? Robert. Robert? Okay, Robert, what was your argument? It was the only one with the number zero in it. All right, so the only brave one that went to corner two. What was um, your argument for corner two, box two? I think box two doesn't belong because the two and the three are both prime numbers. We chose box three because uh, the box three has a point twenty-five, while the rest of them are related to uh, a third. How many people view that? I chose box four because it's the only number that has a value greater than one. How many people does that make sense? So with the strategies of which one doesn't belong and would you rather, these strategies in particular allow access for all students to be able to come up with an argument. Regardless of their perceived mathematical ability, what these strategies do is provide what we call a low floor and a high ceiling. They're so open-ended that anyone can be able to make some sort of argument or an observation to be able to share. I would say the high ceiling part of it allows students to really escalate their mathematics to whatever level they feel that they're capable at that time. 